welcome to Travis Baptist. I see a lot of people brave the rain. I know when, when I left the house, it was pouring pretty hard. We actually left probably five, ten minutes later, thinking that it might lighten up a little bit, and it just didn't. Until we got to like around Grant, and it was like almost stopped when we got onto Weber, and then by the time we got to Saratoga, it was pouring again, so it was just... <laughs> But we need the rain, so definitely not going to complain about getting a little wet, bit wet. So. so we have something to praise the Lord about today, too. So let's go ahead and stand, and we'll get started with singing as the deer. As the deer panteth for so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield, to you. The scripture reading is from Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be Anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we love you so much. We love that you loved us before we ever knew you and while we were yet sinners. You died for us. 
Lord, we can't even fathom how deep that love could be, that you didn't wait for us to get better or become anything else, but while we were yet sinners. For this, we're grateful. And so, Father, please cleanse our hearts this morning as we worship you. Help us and let us lift up to you our feeble attempt at telling you how wonderful you are. And God, every one of us comes in here today with burdens, with cares, with failure, with brokenness. And we come before you, Lord, asking for healing and help. We come before you asking that you might reach down and touch our hearts and bless us. And for that one that wandered in today, Lord, that truly wants to know you, that today could be the day they come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. So we ask all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and you can be seated. And we are grateful you're here worshiping with us today. Um, you know, remember, when you pray for rain and you get it on Sunday, you still need to come to church, okay? So, way to go, y'all. And um, we are grateful uh, for all you that will be watching us at home on the internet. And um, just keep praying that God's will keeps being done around here, okay? Uh, we got a few things happening. Um, let me see. We're going to have uh, uh, on tomorrow night is when it is. Tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m., Vacation Bible School meeting. Um, this is the month of May. And then after May comes June. By the way, this is the middle of the month. It's a halfway over, May is. And then it's June. And then it's July. And then it's July 19th to the 23rd when Vacation Bible School is. You got basically two months um, is all the time we have left for that, about 60 days. So be in much prayer. We've got a meeting tomorrow night. We need you there. And uh, we had a work day yesterday, got us some things done. Um, so we hope that keeps things keep moving forward. But do be in prayer, and if at all possible, be with us at the meeting tomorrow evening, 6.30 p.m. right here in this room. That also means if Vacation Bible School's two months away, First Blessings is three months away. Um, we've got a sign-up sheet for all the uh, jobs we've got. It's out there on the little table. First Blessing is our annual shoe giveaway where uh, we give away a free pair of shoes to every child that registers between the years of uh, 3 and 18 years old. So please, um, and yes, you can sign up your kids, your family's kids, your neighbor's kids. Uh, let them know. Uh, they can go to the website, travisbaptist.org. That website is in your bulletin, by the way. Um, and also, when you get to the website, there's a little link that says shoes. And you click on that and you get to work. All right? That'll be your quickest, easiest way to get registered. Um, and so please uh, keep that in mind. Also, this Wednesday or Thursday night, see, we've gone the whole year now, and I still haven't gotten used Thursdays. This Thursday night, Awana is going to be having its annual uh, graduation, and that will be when, Thursday evening at 6.30 here in this sanctuary right here. Please have your kids here early, uh, like 6.10, 6.15, something like that, and uh, so that they can get ready to go. Um, there won't be a prayer meeting Thursday night. But then next week on the 26th, the prayer meeting will move back to Wednesdays. And we're going to be over in the parlor to start with, okay, till we see how that's going to go. All right? Um, so that'll be on Wednesday the 26th. Uh, we'll be moving the prayer meeting over into the parlor for the summer. Okay? Um, and that's kind of most of our announcements right now. We want to thank everyone who helped, and we are hoping you had a good Mother's Day last week. Want to remind you that uh, we got the flap here on our bulletin. And uh, if you're visiting with us for the first time or the first time in a long time, uh, or if your address or phone number or email or any of those things have changed, or if you've got a prayer request, this little form on here, you can fill it out. It tears right off. If you want to, you can drop it in one of the offering plates around the building, and we would greatly appreciate that. Um, so we want to take an opportunity now to welcome one another into the Lord's house. All right.
find our places, we will continue to stand as we sing the Lily of the Valley. I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The Lily of the Valley, in him alone I see. He will never, never leave me, nor never me here, while I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fall about me, I have nothing now to fear, with his manna he my hungry soul to fill. Then sweeping up to glory, to see his blessed face, where of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. That's one of those songs that's got a lot of words that go by real quick. <laughs> And I don't think I've ever sung it without stumbling through it. So. But at this time, the children may be excused to head on up to Children's Church. And the rest of us will sing, I Need Thee Every Hour.
It's time for us to pray together. Uh, we always mention lifting up our nation and all the struggles we're going through, all the difficulties that are around us on every side, but we also want to also pray for Israel that has been under attack all week long, trying to defend themselves. And, and uh, when we were over there last year, um, there were a lot of folks that just felt like, let's just tear down the walls and be one big country and we could all get along. But um, there's certain political powers that just don't want that to happen. Pray for them. There's a lot of people over there that don't want to be under this kind of attack. There's a lot of people over there that just wish they had peace, both Christian and Palestinian and Israeli and even atheists. We just want some peace. Pray for them. We don't know. Maybe this is part of um, our future, but let's keep praying uh, that God would have his will done in this situation. And in our country, with all the struggles we have, um, and um, especially for our church, all the activities coming up this summer as we're getting ready for that. You may have others. Um, it's good to see some of us that have been coming back into church after all this time of pandemic. And it's just good to have our visitors with us. Let's remember to lift each other up in prayer. The altar is open if you wish to come up here and pray. Um, got one of our deacons, Ted Humphrey, up here if you want someone to pray with you. So we invite you. Come and pray or stay right there where you're at. But let's lift our hearts up and empty our hearts out to God. Let's pray. Lord Almighty, you alone are God, and there is none like you. There is none who could put a measuring rod up against the universe and tell us how big it is, but you can. There is none that can tell us how the stars maintain their orbits, but you can. There is none who can tell us all the mysteries of life and why things happen, but you alone know it all. And you know us. You don't ignore us. You don't pass us by. But you, gentle Savior, reach down to each and every one and call them to your kingdom. Your love for us is beyond our understanding. But we are grateful. We thank you today that you've allowed us to be your people, called by your name and gathered into a family you call your church. And we pray, Lord, for those around us, our neighbors, our friends, the struggles they're going through, the difficulties that rising prices are causing, the jobs that may be lost due to some projects no longer being profitable because prices have gotten so high. We're praying, God, be merciful to us, be kind to us. Lord, we're asking you to give wisdom to those who lead us, Break their hearts if necessary so that they will humble themselves and, and listen to you. Lord, we pray for Israel in this time, that you would protect her, that you would guard her people. And Lord, we pray for those who are part of Hamas, Lord, that you would reach down and make yourself very real and powerful to them, that they too might believe, that they too might turn from their ways and believe that Jesus Christ is risen. Lord, that's the only way there's ever going to be peace there. Either that or you yourself coming to set up your kingdom. 
And Lord, we look forward to either one. Whichever your will is, whatever your plan is, we pray that you will come soon, Lord Jesus. We pray for your kingdom to come. We pray that we will be ready on that day when your glorious appearing, that we will all have been found doing your will. That whatever talents, whatever resources, whatever gifts you have given us, we've made good investments of those so that you look down upon each and every one here and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Lord, we pray that we are serving. We pray that the things we do are profitable for your kingdom. We pray, God, that you will guide us every step of the way so that we are clearly obedient and clearly in your will. We struggle sometimes, Father, knowing what to do, wondering if we're doing enough or if we're even doing the right thing. Give us comfort about that. And remember that our feeble efforts, you step in and you make sure that it's profitable. That the glory would never be for us, but always for you. So reach out to our Awana group, our Sunday school classes, our teenagers. Reach out to our Vacation Bible School ministry, our First Blessing ministry. Reach out to these neighbors that live close to us and enable us, Lord, to be lights in all these situations. Use us greatly. We're praying today, Lord, that you'll speak to our hearts. Speak to us and let us know there are wicked ways within us. There is failure in our life. There is repentance that needs to take place. God, help us to see ourselves as you do. Not to be overwhelmed with the disappointment, but instead to be encouraged that you give us a way out of this sin. You give us a way to overcome these habits that drag us down. You have given us hope in the midst of all the despair we see around us. God, grant us that strength. Help us to see your way. Help us to reach out like that woman and just grab the hem of your garment. Lord, that we might follow you. That some blessing might come our way. We need you, Lord. Every hour we need you. And we say this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in singing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. stand for our offertory and if you have communication cards or offering that you want to drop in the offering place feel free during this time to jump out on the aisles we've got offering plates all around the the sanctuary that you can do that this time as we sing I must tell Jesus I must
We just thank you, Lord, for being our helper, for loving us so much that you gave us your son who died on a cross and was resurrected that we may have life eternal with you. So many people, Lord, call church and, and Jesus a crutch. And I just have to say thank you for being there that I can lean on. Yes, Lord that I can rely on you to keep me propped up. Because doing this world alone is just nearly impossible. And I can't thank you, Lord, enough for the love that you show us. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to gather and that we can give back to you and that you take what little we give and multiply it, that we can reach out to the world, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you just continue to, to bless us here as we try to glorify your name in everything that we do. And I ask, Lord, that you be with us during this service as you use Pastor David as, as your mouthpiece. Open our hearts and minds to your word. And I ask, Lord, that you forgive us when we sin against you, for it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So good to have you all here with us this morning. If you have your Bible with you, we're going to be in Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. We were in chapter 16 last week. Because we've been studying about um, Paul, a servant's heart. Looking at Paul and some of the things that motivated him and drove him. And made him what he was. Paul was an apostle. A man used greatly by God in our New Testament. He started many churches. He wrote a lot of your New Testament. And before all that, he was quite the sinner. 
opposed to God, trying to destroy Christianity, but God changed him. And because God changed him, he becomes a great example for all of us in the struggles we have and to see what it takes to keep us moving forward. Today, we're going to talk about his prayer life. Pray with me is what we've entitled our sermon. And we are going to read Romans chapter 15, verses uh, 30 through 32. Romans 15, verses 30 through 32. Would you stand please for the reading of God's Word? Romans chapter 15, verse 30. Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful for your word and your examples. And to help us to realize we need you every hour. And that need never stops. And that's actually a very good thing, a very strong thing for us. Because in our weakness, you are strong. We thank you for this. And we pray for these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And you can be seated. When it comes to prayer life, and whether mine is doing good or not, I think it really helps to look at people who pray. And I don't know that there's a stronger example, of course, than our Lord Jesus Christ. If you'll remember, uh, the night he was betrayed, the night before the crucifixion, Jesus had been in the upper room with his disciples, and then they all went out to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Now here is Jesus the Savior of mankind, the Son of God, God the Son, all-powerful, all-knowing, encased in human flesh. And he says to his disciples, come and pray with me. Watch for an hour. In a moment of need, here he is, the man who could walk on water, the man who could calm a storm with just the words, the man who could turn... Twelve, you know, a, a little boy's lunch into an overflowing meal for 5,000 says to these guys, would you all pray for me during my darkest moment in life? That ought to tell us something about how vital prayer is. That even Jesus would want his people praying for him. And remember, when he asked those guys to watch and pray with him in Gethsemane, they had just been stumbling, bumbling, faithless, doubtful, weak, frustrating him every step of the way. And yet he still said, you're the ones I want praying for me. Now we come to the Apostle Paul. Next to Jesus Christ, probably the strongest example of Christian living we have in the New Testament. And here we'll see it again. Let's take a look at his prayer life a little bit. Just a brief glimpse in these three verses right here. And we're going to see some things along that same line of the vital necessity that prayer is. No matter how talented, no matter how smart, no matter how skilled, no matter how charismatic one's personality might be, you will not succeed in any kind of ministry or service for the Lord Jesus Christ if you're not a praying person. Amen. That connection does so much for us. We do not here at Travis Baptist tack on a prayer at the beginning and at the end. We also got a prayer time in the middle. Why is that? Because we believe in the power of prayer. Amen. We believe that is not just a, an accessory, yes. but we put it smack dab in the middle of the service. Amen. Because that's where it belongs. At the beginning, at the end, in the middle, and sometimes we'll even do it a couple more times during the service. Amen. Because we ought to be praying. Prayer has power beyond what you and I would believe. Because God constantly encourages us to do it. So let's take a look. Paul's prayer life here. This great Christian, this man who was a writer of so much of the New Testament, this man who planted churches, won souls for Jesus, and, and, and has left a legacy that has lasted for over two millennia. What does he say about prayer? I think the first thing we see here, as we read verse 30, I beg you, brethren, 
I need you to pray for me. With those words, I beg you, I beseech you. This is not just saying, um, hey, would you all pray for me? This isn't just some lackadaisical, yeah, pray for me when you don't see me again. No, this is, I need, I beg, I beseech, please, don't forget to pray for me. Don't you think for a minute you don't need other people praying for you. Sometimes we don't share everything. And we don't need to. I mean, you know, we, we got this thing called unspoken prayer request. I don't know what's going on with you, but I know who does. And I can lift it up and he'll know what I'm talking about. I don't know and I don't need to know, but he does. Amen. We put a prayer list out every week. It's about front and back, two pa- you know, a page. Yeah, there's a lot of names on there. We need to not just treat that as something to scribble on. We need to remember that as a church, we're called to pray for one another. And that when we put our name on that list or we're out there on the prayer chain, we want to be prayed for. And we need our brothers and sisters I love it. Like we said earlier, man, when Jesus went to Gethsemane, he said, you 12, uh, well, you 11, they already sent Judas away, but you, you guys pray for me, you of little faith, you who paid little attention to what I said, pray for me. See, we don't just need kings and queens and pastors and, and extra holy people. Man, the guy who might have been top of the spiritual food chain, a guy like Paul or even Jesus, would say, I need all y'all praying for me. It's all right that you ask the pastor to pray for you. But it works just as well if your mom is praying, if your friend is praying, if your brother or your sister in Christ is praying. It's even better when all of us are praying and lifting each other up. When a man like this stands before you and says, I need you, I beg you, in verse 30, through the Lord Jesus Christ, That you strive together with me in prayers. We need him every hour. But he gave us a church family. And in this church family we also say to each other. Lift lift each other up in prayer. I think the second thing we're going to see here now. And it's tied to the first. This recently we were talking about prayer with somebody and I said, you know, there's a word we need to start putting back into our prayer life and that's desperation. Some of our prayers need to be desperate. I need you to pray for me. Jesus was desperate in Gethsemane. And then we look here in um, verse 30 and we see, now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Spirit, you strive together with me. Why does he say strive together? Because prayer is a battlefield. When I say prayer is a battlefield, some of y'all may say, well, yeah, it's hard for me to pray sometimes. The devil doesn't want me to. And that's probably true. But there's a reason why the devil doesn't want you to pray. And why your human flesh says, no, we ain't got time of this. No, we're tired and want to go to sleep. No, we're... Because prayer is a battlefield where we wage warfare against the devil and his forces. You and I, when we pray, are not just mumbling words. Over in Ephesians chapter 6, it speaks of the Christian's spiritual armor. Gird up your loins with truth and that breastplate of righteousness and that shield of faith and that helmet of salvation and then that sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then he closes it up, praying always with all prayer and supplication that we are praying that that communication with the Lord is as vital as the rest of our spiritual armor. Why? Because if you're going to do battle with the devil, you better be getting orders from up above. You better be in touch with the commander in chief, with the king, so that you know that you are fighting the right fight. Sometimes when we pray, we might suddenly see things from a different perspective because the king has been talking to us. We need to realize That prayer is as big a part of the battle as anything else we do. And that might answer the question why we struggle so much and are so convinced we're bad at it. And and I go back. You know, if there's anybody that should have been bad at prayer, it was Jesus' disciples. Because they never understood a single thing he told them. And yet when the chips were down, they are who he turned to. 
Stop thinking you've got to be something extra spiritually special to pray. Stop thinking that my prayer life is weak and it'll always be weak and I'm just not very good at it and all that. Stop that right now. Amen. That's, a <coughs> That's a lie that comes straight from the devil. When we pray, we are in the realm of God's power. When we pray, we have turned it over to Him and He is working and He is doing and He has asked us all through the Bible. He's saying, come to me. Come into my throne room and find mercy and grace to help. Prayer is not something where I'm bothering God on His day off. Prayer is a constant fellowship with Him. Amen. <coughs> he wants to hear from you. He wants you to come and share every burden and fight this battle with Him. When we strive, the idea here is... Uh, is an athletic word. Paul, if Paul lived with us today, he'd be tuned into ESPN all day long when he was in front of the TV set. He liked his sports. He talked a lot about striving for the crown, pushing for the finish line. And here this word striving was a term often used in wrestling where you, you, you're just kind of trying to push on each other. If you're not into wrestling, then football. It's fourth down. You're on the one. you got to score because you're five points behind. What's going to happen there? Nothing real graceful. A whole lot of pushing and shoving going on. As strong as you can put out there. And he says, strive with me like that. He's not saying strive. He's saying strive. Get down there. Get dirty. Get sweaty. Sneak a punch in if you have to. Push as hard as you can. In all of this, we have got to move forward. This is the picture we get in prayer. Sometimes we have, all right, all you folks stay back behind and pray for us. We'll do the real work. Those people praying are doing the real work. Yes. And we've got to see prayer like this. That it is a powerful thing. And as he says, I want you to strive together with me. And this, this leads to something real important. Not just that it's a battlefield, but when he says strive together, prayer enables us to participate in the ministry of others. When you pray for Pastor David and his sermon preparation, you got a little bit of hand in what's going on up here. You helped. Um, I joke, every once in a while we'll have someone that for, maybe it's me or someone else, we might bring our dog up because we got issues at home and the dog's got to come to work with us. And I often joke the dog gets in there with me and helps me write the sermon. Yeah. What's really happening is those of you who pray for your pastor and his sermon preparation are helping write the sermon. Those of you that are praying on the direction of what we go with the pulpit, the next series and all that, you're helping. You're participating in that. When we pray for a missionary, when we pray for Awana leaders, when we pray for others, and we are helping. We are part of that ministry. Look what he says. Strive together with me. I'm not in Rome yet. This letter is, this book of the Bible is written to the church in Rome. Paul's not there yet. But he's saying to them, even though you're over there <coughs> and I'm over here, as you pray, we're working together. Amen. We got a missionary in Argentina. We got a missionary in Bangladesh. We got a missionary in Nigeria or Chad. We've got a missionary in Tanzania. We've got one in Vietnam. We've got them all over the world. And when we pray for them, we got a piece of that. Amen. As I strive together. Will this change your attitudes in prayer that when you're praying for someone, it's just, well, I need to pray for them. No, no, no. I want to get mixed up in what they're doing. I want to be part. I, maybe I can't go over there. Maybe I can't do this, that, or the other. But I am still part. When I am praying for that brother or sister in the hospital, in surgery, going through everything, I'm part of that surgical team. That's right. I am part of that healing process. I'm not trying to build you up. I'm trying to let you see how important it is when you pray that you are involved. Strive together with me. We might be thousands of miles apart. But when we pray for one another, we are one in the Spirit. We are one in that bond of love. We are united as God's people. 
It goes across any physical barrier, any distance, and I am able to help you in your ministry. Pray for one another. Next, as we continue, we get into verse 31. And he says, you know, and pray for me that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe. <coughs> and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. Prayer can change things. Why does he ask you to pray? Number one, he's pray, asking you to pray that, that uh, uh, I might be delivered for those in Judea. There are some people in Judea, in Israel, where Paul is at, that would do him harm. Remember, at the beginning of this series, we took a hard look at Paul in his early life. And he was one of those Pharisees that wanted to stop all those Jesus believers. He wanted to arrest them and have them put to death. He wanted to silence their message and wipe them from the face of the earth. Well, when Jesus appeared to him and he went to the other side and became a Christian and now a very outspoken proponent of it, oh, they want him dead. They want him dead more than anyone else. And so he says, pray. These guys here in Judea in verse 31, that I may be delivered from those who do not believe. He doesn't identify them as his captors, persecutors, killers. He identifies them as those who do not believe. I think it's interesting that he knows the only way his circumstances are going to change is not if those leaders switch parties, but if they in fact get saved. Because their problem isn't that they're opposed to him. Their problem is, is they're not believers. And that's how he sees it. And that's how he's praying about it. Pray that you can keep me as a, you know, get out of these chains, get out of this prison. Pray, and I'm asking you to pray because I think prayer can change that situation. Prayer can change things in our difficulties. <coughs> they want to stop him. They want to shut him up. They want to do away with him. So he says, pray for me in that. And then also... Pray for me in provisions. That God would take care of what I need. Look at the second half of verse 31. Pray that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe. And then he says, And that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. That what I'm doing here, and that word acceptable means, you know, that, that it's something that helps them out. That blesses them. That helps them move forward in their faith. That helps them grow. He is praying, one, that God would protect him in his difficulties, and two, that God would provide in him being in the ministry. Thank you. Appreciate that. Some days the sinuses just run, don't they? Um, but anyway, we are here looking at a man that is so deeply entrenched in his need for prayer because he knows it does affect our circumstances. It does affect our outlook and changes our character. God does a work in us when we pray. And as he does that work in us, that affects our circumstances. He wanted to be able to make sure that what he was doing for these people was not a waste of their time nor his. When he says that my work, may, my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints... He, he's speaking in terms of that, you know what, whatever else I did for this church, I hope I didn't hurt it. I hope I built it up a little bit. I hope I encouraged it. I hope I blessed it. Sometimes we struggle with that. Sometimes we wonder, have I done any good at all in that Sunday school class? Am I doing any good at all with those kids in Awana? Am I doing any good at all with those people at work that I tell them I'll pray for them? We need to pray sometimes that just that my, my, what I'm doing would work would have profit. Maybe I don't see it. Maybe they never say to me, I'm so grateful you were here and you prayed for me. But one day, one day, they look back and realize what a blessing it was to have had you there. Amen. Some of these kids, they're so bratty. They're so rebellious. They're so difficult to deal with in, in your class. But then, you, you know, they turn about 19 or 20 and they sit there and go, you know, you were someone that stuck with me through it all. Mom and dad sometimes acted like they were giving up. School, they never cared. 
all through it. Your presence might be more of a blessing than you've ever understood. As he says there, pray for me that my service might be acceptable. In all of this, as he's praying, we see a man who is definitely gifted by God. A man whose God power was manifested through. A man who left an impact that reached from the Middle East to Corpus Christi. Because being the good kind of Baptist, we're the kind that believe, man, our churches go all the way back to the days of Jesus Christ. He started his church and it's still going on. And it's never disappeared from the face of the earth. When we sing that little kid song, I've shared with you before that song, Father Abraham had many sons and many sons had Father Abraham. Just like all of us are sons of Abraham because we have believed because he is the father of all who believe. Even so, nearly every church, because the church has started in Jerusalem and went to places like Antioch and on down the line until they got here to you and me. This guy, he did that great of a work. I love this little passage in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. It's at the end of that spiritual warfare section. And he, he told you to be in prayer. And then he says, And pray also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Here's a guy. Thirteen letters in the New Testament written by him. Umpteen churches uh, started by him. We don't know how many people came to know Christ because of his earthly ministry. And goodness sakes, nearly everybody else because of his writing ministry. How many people got saved reading the book of Romans? All right. How many of you have gotten saved? Listen to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved. You know, the impact is incredible. And here he says, pray for me, also for me, that words might be given. Pray for me that I might know what to say. Isn't that what he's saying here? What makes you think I got all the answers? When a man is big time as the Apostle Paul says, pray for me that I may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly, proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Pray for me that God might give me the right things to say. I need you to pray for me like that. We need to pray for each other like that. Boy, if he needed it, then boy do we ever to pray that God would give us what to say. God would make us what we need to be. God would continue blessing us. Do you see that no matter how mature, no matter how up in the ranks you might think another Christian is, every one of us is in desperate need of a touch from the Savior Amen. through prayer. So take a look at yourself. How vital is prayer in your life? How are you accomplishing things without it? I think we'd have to admit one time when we think we're not accomplishing much that's pretty well the reason. We hope in your heart today getting a new perspective about how desperately we need to be praying. Of how much this church needs to pray. Of how this city needs us praying. If prayer is a battlefield who's fighting for Corpus Christi? Who's fighting for our schools? Who's fighting for our streets and our apartment complexes and our homes? Who's fighting for our city council? Who is doing battle on all that? We know good and well the devil is out there working on all of them. What about us? As we draw together in our prayer times that this is just not idle time till we move on to something else but that we realize that prayer is as big a part of what we do at this church as anything else. That when we gather on Sunday mornings, we have that family prayer time. If we do it on a Thursday or a Wednesday, that, that when we get together and pray, God is working. And when you're there home alone, or you're driving in your car and you're praying as you drive, that that is as vital and effective and avails much. We as God's people need to pray. Only those, and this was a big controversy about two, three decades ago. A man got up there and said, God only hears the prayers of those who 
are followers of Jesus. That might disturb some people. But it's true. God hears the prayers of His children. Those who believe. If you're not a believer in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the only prayer God will hear from you is, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner and I need Jesus. But for you who are Christians, everything that comes from your heart, God hears. Even the words you cannot utter. So much there in your Bible encouraging you to pray and reminding you that the Holy Spirit prays on your behalf and Jesus ever lives to make intercession for you. You are not alone in this thing. Come boldly to the throne of grace. And if you're saying, I really, I really want to be a person who can pray, maybe there's your starting point. Do you know that Jesus Christ died for your sins? Do you know that on the third day God raised Him from the dead? Because whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the mouth we make confession unto salvation in the heart. We believe. If we believe in our heart, God raised Him from the dead. It all starts right there. Simple faith. Not straightening your life out. Not becoming something you're not already. But instead, just coming to Him and saying, I need you every hour. Today, right now, you enter into God's family by praying. By saying, yes, Lord, please. In this moment, I'm starting to believe. I'm starting to understand. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the grave. Right there from the heart is where it can all start. It can start for you today. We're going to pray here in a moment. And then we're going to sing. And while we're singing, if you're ready to make today the first step of your new journey with Jesus Christ, I want you to come down here and tell me about it so I can pray with you about it, okay? And maybe you're at a point where, you know, I'm a believer, but I'm ready to be baptized and tell everybody I'm a believer. Or maybe I'm at this point where I've been coming to this church for a while and I know God wants my heart here. And I want to join by the transfer of letter or as a new believer or however. Alright? But while we're singing, when that time comes, I want you to come down and, and, and tell me about that. Alright? So let's pray for a moment. Our Father in heaven, we love you. And we know there may be some people here, Father, that for the first time they're really ready to take a step. I believe, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. That when you died, you took my punishment. You were an innocent man. But you took my guilt and the punishment I deserved. The condemnation that was waiting for me. And then you rose from the grave, Jesus. And I believe you did because, because now your victory over death means I also can have that victory. And right now, Lord, people speaking to you asking you that you would come into their life right now. We're praying, Lord, for those who are ready to take a step beyond that, maybe in baptism or even in church membership. Lord, that you give them the courage while we sing to come down. But most of all, that you would make us, Lord, a praying people. That what we've spoken about here today sinks into our hearts, takes fruit, and bears much fruit. We're praying for these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. So we're going to sing right now. If you're ready to take a step, do that physically by, by stepping out in the aisle. Come down here and let me pray with you about this, all right? And uh, let's go ahead and stand. And we're going to sing, Have You Any Room for Jesus? If you're ready, come down and tell me about it.
wash my sin away, my guilt, my past. As my heart opens to you, Lord, come and change me from the inside out. Is today the day you're ready for change? Is today the day you want your life to reach up to another level? It all begins right here, right now. What are you going to do with Jesus? so glad you could be with us here today. Thank you for coming. I know the weather can be a chore sometimes, but we are grateful for it. And um, want to remind deacons, we have a meeting next Sunday afternoon. Um, please keep that in mind. We have a vacation Bible school meeting tomorrow evening. We've got Awana's graduation on Thursday. And after that, our, our weekly prayer meeting is going to move back to Wednesdays, starting the 26th. Keep all that in mind, please. And uh, Ted Humphrey, would you come and dismiss us in prayer, please, sir? Morning, church. I consider it an honor to be able to come up here and stand and pray um, to our Heavenly Father, which I truly believe in. And all I ask you is this, is that I came into the church this morning with prayer on my heart because there are a lot of things that's going on in our church family. Um, it even hit my household. And uh, I'm going to ask you to pray for me. I'm going to ask you to pray not only for me, but for my family. And when I ask that, I ask that sincerely because sometimes I feel like I can't do it alone. Uh, I am supposed to be the spiritual leader of my home. I'm supposed to be a good husband. And I'm supposed to be a good father. You see my children who come up here and try and participate in worshiping Christ. It is what I truly believe and I'm honored to be their father to do. It makes my heart warm when we drive down the road and they're singing about Jesus in the back seat. I don't know about you. I don't know what your life is like, but I am here to tell you that when we walk into the doors of Travis Baptist Church, we walk into the doors hoping that a family is going to reach out and love us and not judge us because of the sins that we may have in our lives. Some of you may not know. Some of you may not know the person standing next to you who's been coming to this church for a very long time. Think about that. Do you really know what's going on in their lives? There's a song out there that says, you know, when people come into church and they see each other and they greet each other and they say, hey, how are you doing today? And you say, all right. Are you really? Are you really all right? Or do you wait and you find someone else that hopefully will listen to your burdens. Listen to the things that you're going through. Is this a safe place? Is this a safe place where you will be lifted up by your brother and sister and not judge you? Because you never know who's going through the same struggles you are. It's not by coincidence that pastor preached on prayer. Paul. Paul was a man who had a burden on his heart for other people. So much so that he wrote letters to churches on how they should love one another, to reach out to one another, but reach out to those who are lost. I'm supposed to pray. I guess this might be my prayer, right? This is my moment? No, this is Jesus' moment. If you don't know the Holy Spirit, let him dwell within you 
And now let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning with a heavy heart, a longing, a hurting, a desire to find someone who will listen to my story. Who do you have that you will send as you did to Isaiah when you said, send me. Send me. I'll go. Are you willing to listen to my family who have lost loved ones this week? To the phone call that I had and I prayed with my brother as he lays in the hospital with pneumonia. To all of those who are out here in this congregation right now who we say we love. How can we love you? And we don't even know the brother or sister who's standing next to us. Amen. Have mercy upon us, God. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in this place right now. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but Lord, let us be doers. Humble yourself, lose your pride, and accept the Lord Jesus and let him guide you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that we are able to come together as a group of people who are like-minded believers that believe in a country that some of us have served to fight for. That we believe that the pastor says, this thus says the Lord, that it is true. How can we say that and we don't live it? Lord, I ask that you be in our hearts today. You move a spirit in us. Cause us. To reach out to someone. Listen to their story. Pray for them. Pray for them, Lord. Put ourselves before others before ourselves. Not us, but them. Who are you willing to pray for? Find someone today before you leave this church. And you listen to this story and you pray for them. Let it be your mission. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Amen. It ain't about what I said. It's about what God said. Amen. Love one another. Amen. That means to pray for one another. Amen. Carry their burden. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen.